All right, so here's a problem where we have two torques that are put into a gear train that has uh, sort of several stages to it. And what you are supposed to find for this problem is how much torque you would have to apply kind of on that middle shaft in order to make the whole thing uh, be in equilibrium. And we're given uh, a number of different kinds of information here. So for instance, gears one, four, and six, we have what the uh, diameters are of those gears. For gears one, two, five, and six, we have what the teeth are, how many teeth there are for those uh, gears. For uh, input shafts one and six, we're given those input torques, and then we're given the speed of gear three and the speed of gear five. So we have all kinds of different kinds of information that we can bring to bear on this problem. We need to think about all of that to figure out how much torque ultimately we are going to need to apply right here to hold it all in equilibrium. Okay, so let me give you the basic uh, kind of strategy that I'm going to try to go for here and that is I want to determine uh, how much torque uh, torque one implies in terms of the effect that happens on this middle gear. Okay, that way I can figure out how much torque am I going to need to apply to resist that. To that I will add the other, you know, factor which is torque six over here. That is also going to have an effect on how much torque I need to apply on this middle one. If I find those two separately, then I can add them together and I can determine how much torque I need to apply to bring it to equilibrium. So which side do you want to start on first? It doesn't matter to me. Okay, we'll start maybe on the left side first. Okay, so um, maybe I'll put a heading on this and say uh, gear one to two. Okay, and we know torque one, right? So torque one is 15 inch pounds and this is going to basically give me uh, if I use that, it should give me a torque on gear two. So torque on gear two will be torque on gear one. And what do I need to multiply by to make that happen? This one's not too hard, right? You look, we, we have information about the number of teeth on gear one, and we have a number of teeth on gear two. And, uh, you know, gear one is larger than gear two and typically the larger gear carries more or less torque. More, which means the smaller gear carries less torque. So I, you know, given the fact that gear two is smaller than gear one, I'm gonna hope that it's carrying less torque than uh, the input torque, torque one. So I better set up my ratio that way, okay? The other way you can kind of think of this is that it's a direct relationship between your numbers of teeth and your amount of torque. But anyway, we'll put in here uh, 40 over 50. Okay, but T1 is just 15 inch pounds. And that gets multiplied by that four over five. And so we can quickly figure what that is. So 15 times four divided by five, which is 12. Okay, so 12 inch pounds. Now my next question is, what direction uh, do I have to turn this with this 12 inch pounds if the only thing that I am uh, reacting against is torque one? Like let's forget about the right side of the gear train for right now. If the only thing that I'm reacting against is torque one, do I need to turn the direction that this arrow is shown or do I need to turn opposite the direction that that arrow is shown? Okay, let me ask you this. Is this arrow shown um, the same direction as torque one or opposite? Are these, are these two arrows, this one right here and this one right here, are those two rotational directions the same or opposite? Same. They're the same. And since these, are, these gears are adjacent to each other, what direction of torque do I have in gear two relative to gear one, as far as a resisting torque, which is what I'm trying to find up here, right? The resisting torque has to be the same on this adjacent gear to it right here, okay? And so I'm gonna say this 
torque has to be 12 inch pounds, and I'm going to put a note over here uh, in the directions shown. Okay, because that's important, because it could be that the one coming from the opposite end might not need a torque in the direction shown to resist against that torque six. It might need to be opposite the direction shown. So I got to keep track of these so when I do the sum, uh, it, uh, it turns out correct. Okay, so now let's go to the other end. Um, can we figure out how much torque is transferred to this combo gear five and, uh, four and five from six? Okay, how do we figure that out? Okay, so I know the number of teeth on six, right? Number of teeth on six is given right here. And I know the number of teeth on five, that's given right here. So I should be in good shape to figure out how much torque is transmitted into uh, this, you know, kind of first stage right here. Okay, so I'll just do that right here. Gear uh, six to five. Okay, and so what I'll say is T5 is gonna be equal to T6, and what fraction should I multiply by? Okay, which one's bigger? Okay, gear five is bigger than gear six, right? And so we should have more torque carried in gear five than in gear six, because it's the bigger one. So I'm gonna multiply there by uh, 40 over eight. Okay, so T6, let me say that's uh, 15 inch pounds also, times 40 over eight. And this gives us 75. Great. What next? Okay. Yeah, so we probably need to figure out some sort of transition from gear four to gear three, right? So let me put that heading right here. Gear four to gear three. And uh, I know a diameter of four, but do I know a diameter of three? Nope, I don't have that. I know a number, I don't know numbers of teeth or for three or four. Okay, but I do, you guys are on the ball, I do see that I have a ratio of speed between gear three and gear five. How does the speed of gear five relate to the speed of gear four? The They're the same, okay? So that's something you gotta realize here since five and four are attached to each other, this is also the speed of gear four. Because they're attached to each other, all right? So then the next question is, how do torques relate to speeds? Inverse. They're inversely related, right? So that means when I figure out the torque applied to three and I compare that to the torque applied to four, what's the ratio I should multiply by, right? So it says here that three is going faster than five, right? So should three carry more torque or less? Okay, it should be carrying less torque because it's going faster. There's an inverse relationship between torque and speed, right? So uh, what I need to do then is multiply the torque that I had in five uh, by this ratio of, uh, let's see, 14,634. Oops, nope, 1,800. I should use it this way, 1,800 over 14,634, right? Because I'm gonna have less torque in gear three than I would have in gear four because the speed is increasing so much, right? Increased speed, lower torque, okay? Um, the torque 
carried in gear four is the same as the torque carried in gear five, right? And so I'll put in uh, 75 inch pounds times 1800 over 14,634. Okay, and then I'll calculate that. So 75 times 1800 uh, divided by 14,634. Okay, and that gives me 9.225 inch pounds. Now we need to answer the question of what direction would that shaft, how would we have to resist the torque applied by, the, uh, by torque six in order to hold this in equilibrium, okay? Let me show you another way you can think about doing this through a gear train, okay? So you can kind of think of it as a separate question in a lot of ways. So think of it this way. If torque six got its way, what, what direction would uh, this shaft, the very first shaft, turn? Probably, it'd probably turn this way, right? And if that torque got its way, what direction would gear five turn? Okay, the opposite, right? And if torque six gets its way, what direction would this last one turn? The other direction again, right? Well, this is the thing. This is not torque direction. This is what direction would it move if torque six got its way? In other words, if torque six was allowed to accelerate this assembly, um, this is the direction it would want to accelerate. But our task is not to let torque six get its way, right? So we need to resist the direction that torque six would otherwise want to turn this uh, shaft. So our torque for, you know, for this particular phase of it, our torque needs to go the opposite direction of that direction of motion, right? Which that also happens to be opposite the direction of the direction that, that uh, you know, we had the arrow pointing originally, okay? So what I'll say down here is I'll say this is opposite the direction shown. Okay, so that means we need to subtract these two values, right? And when we subtract the two values, we end up with 12 minus what we just got there. So 12 minus the answer, and that gives me 2.775. So, uh, We'll say applied torque, or maybe I should say resisting torque. Is going to have to be equal to 12 inch pounds uh, minus 9.225 inch pounds. And this is going to be equal to 2.775. inch pounds, what direction? Okay. I need to apply more in the direction shown than I would have had to apply in, you know, opposite the direction shown. So the answer is in the direction shown. Okay. So we go up here and see if I can find that. Okay, 2.775 inch pounds in the direction shown. Okay, any questions on that? I'll uh, point one other thing out about this question. Uh, you may have already picked up on it, but um, I'll point it out anyway. Most of the questions that we put on these exams, the answers that are not correct are randomly chosen, meaning they just come out of, you know, they're just some number that comes really from no special thinking or anything like that. This problem is not like that. So when you look at the other answers that are given as choices, uh, each one of those answers is a result of some wrong way of thinking about this problem. So 
you know, this was a, an especially scary problem for that reason. Almost everyone who uh, took the exam probably thought they got this question right, even if maybe they didn't. So, anyway. Any more questions on this one? All right. Do you have other questions? Yes. Okay. Yep. So what it is is that if you don't have the resisting torque where it says find this torque, right? If you don't have that on there, this system will not be in equilibrium, right? So gears two and three would accelerate if we didn't apply some other torque that we're trying to find, right? But by applying that torque, so in other words, the combination of the three torques that gears two, three feel, right? They feel a torque coming from torque one, they feel a torque coming from torque six, and then we're adding a third torque on to balance those, right? The combination of all three of those things makes it not accelerate. I'm not sure if that helps or not, but um, does that help answer the question? 